What's up guys? I wanted to start off this video with an apology for only one upload last week. I had some family stuff come up. My mom had a little medical issue and she is literally my best friend on this entire planet. So of course I had to be there with her. Hopefully y'all get it. Family always comes first. I'm going to try to keep it at two a week from now on, but if I miss one, you guys know why. So I just wanted to let you know why there have been fewer uploads lately. I'm not going anywhere, just some stuff going on. Love you. Thanks for the support. Let's get started. What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. So in today's video, we are going to talk about over penetration and the risks associated with it. A very real concern when using a firearm for self defense. And as you all know, we are big, big fans of penetration here on the channel. I'm going to try to act my age today and refrain from the hundreds of penetration jokes running through my brain right now. So over penetration is exactly what it sounds like when a bullet goes through its intended target, hopefully a bad guy and keeps going, which could of course, possibly injure an innocent bystander. And unfortunately, most good self-defense calibers are gonna have some inherent risk of over penetration, which is why you should always be sure of your target and what's beyond it. Remember, bullets go through stuff, that's what they're designed to do. So today, we are gonna test the risk of over penetration and see how dangerous an over penetrating bullet actually is. And as I'm sure you all expected for this video, we are gonna be using Ballistic Dummy Lab human heads. And by the way, I have had medical professionals, pretty recently actually, reach out that have treated real gunshot victims to let me know the results they see in these videos are very similar to what they see in real life. Of course, there are some differences. These are not real in any way. It's just ballistic gel, but at least we know that they are realistic and these experiments are somewhat valid. Again, these are human heads from Ballistic Dummy Lab. I would be surprised if you've never seen these before because they're literally everywhere at this point, but they are basically designed to show ballistic results as realistically as possible on fake body parts. So these are fake skull surrounded by ballistic gel with fluid and a fake brain on the inside. In total, I have four of these heads out here today and a couple different ideas on how to do this. I think what I'm gonna do is set up two at a time, shoot through the first one, which will be our bad guy, and see how much damage we get in the second one, which will be our innocent bystander, little old lady. It's always a little old lady in these hypothetical situations, just to make you feel as terrible as possible. I might put a water jug behind the second head just in case it goes through both, but our main focus is gonna be on that second head because that is our innocent bystander. All right, we'll go ahead and start with the nine millimeter since that is one of, if not the most common concealed carry caliber. And the bullet we're using is the 124 gram grain federal premium HST, a very common self-defense round. Gonna use the fake MP5 for this one, no magazine, since YouTube doesn't like them and we're only shooting one round. And this video is being filmed literally on the day after the pistol brace ruling came out. So we'll see where that goes. If necessary, we'll go ahead and take this thing off because I'm definitely not gonna SBR a pistol brace. That's dumb. Nine millimeter over penetration. Let's see what it does. Try to get the right angle on it. Well, that result definitely surprised me. Wow. Well, call me crazy, but this is not the result that I was expecting from a nine millimeter at point blank range. We did have a couple things on our side. Number one, we used a hollow point, which is gonna give you less penetration, and the barrel on that MP5 is slightly longer than something like a concealed carry pistol, but really not that much longer. I think it's like a five or six inch barrel. Either way, that bullet did not go through. So that is what you call a money shot right there, right between the eyes, just above the nose, and you can see it obviously did do a good amount of damage, but if we go around to the back, you can see nothing came out the other side. It looks like there might be a tiny little tear in the ballistic shell right there, so maybe one small fragment did sneak through, but either way, that ballistic dummy head stopped the nine millimeter. Well, the nine millimeter passed the over penetration test with flying colors because there is none. And I've shot these heads with ball ammo out of pretty much every caliber and they almost always go through, including the nine millimeter. So that is the advantage of using a hollow point. All right, I went ahead and swapped the head. So we have a new one in the front and the damaged one behind it. And then I rotated that second one. So the entrance hole is facing away. And now we're gonna try the 45 ACP. For this one, we are using the Hornady Critical Defense. This is a hollow point 
but it's kind of known for not getting a ton of penetration. So given the 45, the best possible chance. Bigger, heavier bullet going a little slower. And of course this is a shorter barrel than we had with the nine millimeter, but this is more like something you would see, you know, people concealed carrying. So let's see what it does. <laughs> well, I'm looking at the backside and it looks like we have an exit hole. <laughs> So I might put the heads a little closer together. I was keeping them about two feet apart just to keep it realistic because in real life you would never be, you know, touching heads with someone. And in the slow-mo you can see that it did go through, but when it exited, it kind of dipped down and bounced off the table and unfortunately did not hit our second head. But I can say with almost 100% certainty that it was going slow enough, it probably wouldn't have done hardly any damage to that second head. But you can see here that it definitely did exit out the back. And I knew this was a possibility, you know, lining up two heads and getting the bullet to go perfectly straight on the exit is not the easiest thing to do. Um, in the front, you can see if I can get it from sliding around the entrance hole and the damage. So quite a bit more impressive than the nine millimeter. I did put it a little higher, um, but that is a very impressive entrance hole. And again, nothing hit our second head. So big heavy bullet, definitely harder to stop than the nine millimeter, but after watching the slow-mo, I just don't think it would have done very much, if any damage at all, to our innocent bystander because it was going so slow when it did over penetrate. So these guys probably have a pretty bad headache, but if you look at this one, you can see that entire side is completely undamaged. And what I wanna do is hit that first head with a nine millimeter ball round and see how it over penetrates compared to the hollow points. I also brought them a little closer together, so hopefully we don't miss the second head with the over penetrating bullet. Again, as you can see, just a regular nine millimeter ball round. Let's see if this over penetrates. I don't know what to expect, to be honest with you. I think it did. <laughs> All right, there is our entrance hole from the nine millimeter ball round just above the ear, and it did not even disturb that first head really, which tells me it didn't dump very much energy, probably didn't even slow down and just zipped right through. If we go over here, you can clearly see we have one big exit hole right there, and that's a tough part of the head to get through, by the way. So did not break it apart, stayed intact, and went straight through our first head. And then if you look at the second head, you can clearly see an entrance hole right there behind the ear. So it did go in. I don't see an exit hole on our second head. It's kind of hard to tell in the slow-mo because there is shrapnel, but I would assume that that bullet did not go through our innocent old lady. And you could see not only did that first head not fall over, it really didn't even move very much on the table. And then the second one got knocked over pretty hard, which tells me the second head is where that bullet dumped most of its energy and probably stopped. So ball ammo will put you at a higher risk for over penetration. And I don't think our innocent bystander survived that one unfortunately. Well, these heads are still intact. I'm sure there's some internal damage going on and they're not 100%, but I think we could squeeze one more in there before we get out our new ones and try the rifle. So this is the 40 Smith & Wesson Federal Punch and we're shooting it out of the Glock 23. This is a very common police caliber and a little more powerful than the nine millimeter. So let's see if it over penetrates. <laughs> And there is our entrance hole from the 40 Smith & Wesson right there. If I flip it over, you can clearly see that it did pass all the way through. And that one actually knocked both of the heads over. So it was a hollow point. It did dump a lot of energy into the first head, but it still did over penetrate. And if we go over here, 
you can see that big old entrance hole on head number two right there. So that clearly went straight through the bone and into the head. I do not think it went through head number two. I don't see an exit hole. Again, I realized the internals might have been compromised, so take it with a grain of salt, but the skulls weren't and the internals were all still in there. So I think the result probably would have been the same either way. The 40 Smith & Wesson did over penetrate and hit our second head. Let's get out the rifle. Oh, and by the way, I did plan on using a Glock for the nine millimeter as well, because I know people will say it's unfair I used a longer barrel for the nine millimeter, which is true, but I forgot my Glock 19. So all I had was the MP5. All right, we have two brand new heads on the table and we are gonna try the 5.56. This is the Black Hills 77 grain OTM, one of the best self-defense rounds for this caliber, in my opinion. So let's see what it does. People always say the 5.56, because it's so small and lightweight, is actually less likely to over penetrate than some of those handgun rounds. I don't know if that's true. Let's find out. <laughs> well, I don't know if it over penetrated, but holy crap, that was a lot of damage. <laughs> Well, with all the others, I showed you the entrance hole, the exit hole, stuff like that. With this one, I'll just say he didn't make it and we'll leave it there. But that is why the Black Hill 77 grain OTM is such a good self-defense round. You can actually see the entrance hole right there. Look how tiny that entrance hole is. And then he just got JFK is basically what happened there. So let's take a look at our second head that was sitting behind him. Already I can see a little bullet fragment right there behind his ear. It did not go very deep, but it did puncture the skin. And then we have some more shrapnel marks up here. And I can't tell if those are bone fragments from the first head or bullet fragments that pass through. None of them went very deep. There are, you know, some surface injuries for sure. But again, nothing penetrated that second head. And then obviously on the other side, no exit holes because there were no entrance holes. Well, it looks like what they say about the 5.56 is pretty true for the most part. And keep in mind that second head was like less than a foot away from the first one. And even still, nothing made it through the bone. So I think our innocent bystander survived. Might need a couple band-aids, but nothing too serious. And the 5.56 definitely passed the over penetration test and by far did the most damage to the first one. Wow. Okay, I'm editing this video and on the slow-mo, I can definitely see a big chunk of something fly out and barely miss the top of the second head. And I did not notice that when I was filming. It looks too big to be the bullet. So maybe it's the bullet and a chunk of ballistic shell. Not really sure, but I wanted to point that out because the 5.56 might not have actually stopped in that first head. I don't know, what do y'all think? All right guys, thank you for watching our little over penetration experiment today. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'm gonna be honest, I was kind of surprised by some of these results. I did not expect the nine millimeter to stop in the first head. Of course, hollow points are designed to reduce over penetration, so it's good to know that it actually works, but that one definitely surprised me. Like I said, I wanna do this with other calibers as well, so let me know in the comments which ones you would like to see. I assume most rifles especially, but really anything bigger than the guns we brought out are probably gonna go through more than one head, but you never know till you try it. I also wanna set up like four to five heads and just blow through them with giant guns and see how many heads it takes to stop those calibers. So if you're interested in that, let me know down there as well. Of course, you can also find me on Instagram, Rumble. I'll put links for all social media down in the description box below if you want to go check those out. And if you like the video, please hit that like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.